What's going on, Striving Grinders? Today we have with us Hannah Browdy. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We, the Striving Grind community, would like to get to know you. Hi, um, I am Hannah Browdy. I am 24. I'm married and I have a little girl. She's two years old. Um, and I am a yoga enthusiast. I do yoga every damn day and um, I like to get others into the yoga movement with me. Nice. So give us, like, tell us your definition of yoga. Um, well, in Sanskrit, yoga means union. And when I practice yoga, I feel the, the unity between my soul and my body. And um, just, it's a, it's a very spiritual practice. Um, really gets you in connection with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like a deeper connection. Nice. So how long have you been doing yoga and what got you started? Um, I've actually been doing yoga for about six years, I'd say. Um, I took my first class at TCC, my community college, and it was just an extra PE class that I had to take to get my credit for my <laughs> degree. And I ended up falling in love, um, and after the semester ended, I found a local studio, and I've been hooked ever since. Cool. So what about it actually made you fall in love? Um, I think that with the class, we didn't just focus on the postures. There was, like, we had readings, and we had assignments in this class where we were, like, actually learning about the, the whole history of yoga. And that's what I really fell in love with, was just everything other than the postures. And then the postures just add into that, and they, they deepen the, the unity that you have with, within everything. Nice. So you kind of already touched on this. So other than the postures that's um, being held, what, what other things does yoga do for you other, like, as far as like mind, body, and spirit? Um, well, I mean, it definitely teaches me patience <laughs> throughout the day and um, just to use my breath as soon as you get into a class the first thing that they do is they tell you to focus on your breath and become one with your breath and when you do that you can really calm your mind and take all the stress out of your life and just focus on what you need to get done and um, come into the moment instead of having your mind go at a million miles a minute like everybody is is every day you know right. really to tune to the moment okay so you used to be a gymnast so how yes. how easy was that for you to transition into yoga because I, um, I know you have to be really flexible to be able to pull out half of the stuff or majority of the stuff that you guys put out. Um, so. yeah i mean being flexible definitely helps um in some of the deeper postures but the basics of yoga, you really don't need any flexibility. And as with regular practice, you gain that flexibility and then you can get into the deeper poses and everything like that. But, um, I mean, definitely having a flexible background helps though. <laughs> right. So for people who aren't as flexible, um, mm -hmm. and find that as a challenge of getting started or they fear getting started, say, um, you know, they're not physically fit or just they're not flexible at all. What can what advice can you give them to break that barrier or to help them become more flexible? It's totally not about that. When you go into a class, there's zero judgment. You're another thing that a teacher will say to you is that the practice is for you. It's don't worry about anybody else in the class because they're doing their own practice. They're not worrying about yours. There's no judgment. So if you if you can't touch your toes, that's fine. You know, you don't need to touch your toes. It'll come. Practice and all is coming. So just just keep working at it, and you'll get there. And um, just keep it up. Consistency is key, definitely. Without right. consistency, you'll you'll lose it. You know. For sure. Like so. Listen, striving grinders. I really want to put that out there as well i think it was smart that hannah said that and it's very important consistency and you know worrying about yourself so i know for me in my fitness journey when i first started working out about two and a half three years ago um i couldn't bench press at all like i was so like skinny and scrawny 
Um, and there was females actually in there that was lifting more weight than I was. So <laughs> I had to like really overcome this barrier of like, man, what are people going to think of me? Worrying about judgment and things like that. Um, but I realized once I started worrying about myself, like, okay, I'm in here for me. I know that, you know, if I do this, this, and this and be consistent, um, I know the results will come. I know the strength will come and things like that. Eventually yep. it did. And I think that's very important that people do know that. So, um, being consistent and just knowing the reason why you're there and focusing about yourself as, a, as opposed to like worrying about your surroundings. Yeah, absolutely. Leave your, leave your ego at the door too. It's not, for sure. it's not about getting into the deepest version of any posture. It's about going through the practice and, and doing what your body is telling you. Listening to your body is really key because you don't want to, you don't want to overstretch yourself. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt yourself. It's not about injuring yourself to get into this crazy posture. It's about feeling through the posture and getting into as deep as you can hold. Right. So speaking on that, um, getting into the posture and not injuring yourself and things like that, can you talk a little bit about like proper form? Like what is considered proper form and what are people doing that can hurt them and how they can prevent that? Um, there is a lot of hip alignments in different postures and your shoulders need to be, you know, you don't want to twerk your shoulders out of posture. Um, so I'll show you guys later. Um, like in certain poses, you don't want to let your elbows drop behind your shoulders because then you're going to start rolling your shoulders out and that's going to start to hurt. And then you're going to cause yourself an injury. Um, and then a lot of the hip alignments um, when we're doing balancing postures, it, you know, if you have your square hips, then you're going to be able to hold the balance a little bit better. Whereas if your hips are off balance, then you're obviously going to be off balance too. So um, it's it's definitely important when you are holding the postures. Um, so I'll show you guys later. <laughs> so um, mentality, what kind of mentality like, do you really need? to, you know, take on this whole yoga, um, path. Like I know um, for the fitness world, if you were like weight training or something like that, I know mentality is very important. I mean, once you start feeling a burn, you can easily give up and say, I don't want to do this no more. Or once fatigue starts to kick in, you want to quit and give up. What kind of mentality, um, does it take for a yoga person? You definitely need to keep an open mind um, because you're going to see a posture, you're going to see somebody doing something, and you're going to think, oh, well, that looks easy, and then you're going to try to do it, and you realize that you don't have the strength that you thought you had, right. um, and that's definitely discouraging, but you just have to know that practice and all is coming because if once you practice and you understand what you need to do, then you know your final goal is is there it's it's within your reach um it's i just want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what are your three best tips for anyone um definitely regular practice so consistency is key um you're gonna want to you know even if it's just 10 minutes a day you can still get that practice in and at least clear your mind so that you can be ready for the rest of your day. Or maybe you've had a stressful day and you need that 10 minute break to just bring yourself back into the day and, you know, calm yourself back down. Um, I would say find a local studio. Definitely. Um, there are tons of yoga places everywhere. There's um, co-op places where, you know, you just, it's a do by donation class. And then there are other actual studios that, um, you know, have large group classes and there's stand up paddleboard yoga. There's all types of classes. Um, and then just remember that the practice is for you. There's no judgment. So keep yourself, keep your mind open and, um, don't judge others. Don't judge yourself. And, just be prepared. Nice. So what are your best resources for people just wanting to get started with yoga? 
Um, definitely yogaglow.com. Um, they stream a bunch of different yoga classes 24-7. Um, it's a membership program, so it works sort of like Netflix. Um, it's like seven ninety nine a month, and you can watch it anywhere. You can bring your laptop or um, pad, iPad. Um, and then any different yoga books, there's, um, this is the Yoga Bible. It's just a small book. It's got a bunch of different poses, how to get into the postures, um, the proper form, the Sanskrit name, and the regular name. Um, and then just go out there and get yourself a mat and get yourself a yoga strap if you need it for some extra um, stretch. And then just pick a video from Target or Walmart and just get started. It's all about just getting yourself started and just getting in there, getting in the, the, into the door. Right. And that's real because a lot of people say they want to do something or um, give hints at doing something, but they really don't take that action towards actually doing it. Yeah. I think the hardest part of doing anything in life is actually taking, you know, that first step. Yeah. And once you do take that first step, who knows, you know, where that may take you. Right, exactly. So good. Um, who is your favorite um, yoga instructor? Um, I would say probably at my local yoga studio, um, John Yaks. He's, um, he actually owned and co-founded um, Hot House Yoga Studio. He, I haven't taken as many classes as I'd like to with him, but um, every class that I have taken with him, he's gotten my practice that much further and um, he really helps me open myself up and then as far as one that I've never met um, Laura Sakura is definitely a inspiration to me um, and yoga girl those are both their Instagram names um, they inspired me this past year just to like really take my practice to the next level and I have I've, I've over this past year I've gotten a whole lot better than I ever have and I've really taken my practice to like an everyday daily thing and um it's really awesome and I've inspired others which is crazy to think but um because I don't think that I'm great you know like I think Laura Sakura is great and other people think I'm great so it's just it's really awesome it's a circle of inspiration and that's what it's that's what it's really about like um Instagram is very it's so powerful yeah. And you never know who you're like inspiring. You can just take little pictures here and there and like record little videos, but it's just real crazy how anybody from all over the world from all different age groups can, you know, see what you're doing and really like look up to, you know, what you're doing. So I think that's Yeah. Crazy. So it's crazy. Talk talk about like some of the challenges. Um like for fitness they have like the thirty day squat challenge. So I'm I know they have yoga challenges out there, right? Yeah, definitely. Um there are tons, tons of yoga challenges on Instagram that you can follow. Um, and they actually have prizes too. So if you really put yourself out there and you, you know, fully dedicate yourself to the challenge, you can win some awesome prizes. Um, but the, the one thing that I try to make sure of with people who are taking on these challenges, um, just make sure that you get yourself prepared before you get into these postures. You know, you want to properly warm up your body. You don't want to just hop up in there and, you know, get into this crazy posture and not have warmed up your back and then pull your back, you know? So just make sure that you're doing um, the proper warm up. but they're absolutely good for you. I mean, they, they get you into a daily practice, which is good. So um, they're, they're really awesome. And you can find them anywhere, seriously. <laughs> cool. So off the top of the head, what are some that you've done previously? Um, the most recent ones, let's see. I did the Global Yogis. Um, that one was really awesome. I found they were new um, yoga instructors that I found. The Tattooed Yogi, um, Jojo Yoga, Amy Landry, and Robin Martin Yoga. Um, and they were from all around the world. They were from like four different hemispheres, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, they posted a pose each day and, um, you know, you follow the challenge and they walk you through each pose. They make sure that you've 
Um, they list the proper form and they, you know, it's awesome. It's really cool because you get to learn a lot of new poses that right. you have never heard of or seen before. So um, I think that that's what's helped me the best is getting to see all these different variations of form, of different postures. So it's really cool. Nice. It's really Are these daily um, daily challenges? Yeah, uh huh. There are daily ones, and then there are, um, some of the people host just like seven day challenges. Mm -hmm. um, like the most recent one was I forget what the the actual challenge was called, but it walked you through all of your different chakras, which you have seven different ones, um, and they just went through what each chakra does and where it focuses and how you can like learn to open that chakra up and um, you learn a lot of cool stuff. It's pretty informational and it's all from people who are actual yoga instructors. So you know that it's like valid information too. Definitely. So yeah, yeah Starving Grinders, if you're in the like wanting to do yoga, you can definitely um, go on Instagram and follow a lot of these challenges that Hannah just mentioned. As well, follow her because she's a real inspiration. She's um, inspiring people all across the world. So I think that's pretty cool. So one question we like to ask all our guests, um, Hannah, is what does Strive and Grind mean to you? And how do you apply that to your everyday lifestyle? Um, strive and Grind means to me just doing what needs to be done to get to that ultimate goal that you have. Um, and you know, being a, a good role model for others to follow that same model, um, that same striving guy and lifestyle. Um, I'm first and foremost a mother above all and everything. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm a good role model for her. I don't want to be a lazy mom just sitting on the couch all the time. Like I want to show her to get out there and be active and um, be dedicated and have that drive and that motivation to to get what you want in life. Great. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us. So how can, you know, we find you, um, like social network, social media wise? Um, my name is Hannah Brody and that's pretty much my name on everything. Um, I'm, I'm on Instagram, Facebook and Tumblr. So you can find me on all three of those places for, um, I post daily videos about what I'm practicing and what my, what I'm working on and um, I follow a lot of different other yogis that are really awesome as well. So follow them too. <laughs> cool. So can you spell that out for us? For us? So yeah, <laughs> just definitely. It's H-A-N-N-A-H-B-R-A-A-D-E. Hannah Brady. Nice. Thank you so much, Hannah. We definitely appreciate you coming out. I'm going to show you the poses that we're going to do first, and then um, I'll go through them, and I'll walk you through them and show you how to get into them. Um, so the first one is just going to be Chaturanga. Um, the second one is going to be Warrior Two. The third one is going to be Firefly. And then the last one is going to be tree and any variation of it. Um, so you can do this one, a toe stand, or take it into an arm balance. is going to be flat and then from here you're going to squeeze your elbows into your sides and lower yourself down slowly and you're never going to let um, your elbows drop below your shoulders yeah so that's good <laughs> and then you can drop yourself all the way down to the ground 
um, or if you want to take a easier version of it from plank, you can drop your knees to the ground and then go down like that the same way and bring your chin to the ground. So did I do it right? Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, okay, so for the second posture, we're going to come to a standing and you're going to spread your legs about five or six feet. Um, pretty wide stance, and your feet are going to be parallel to one another. <laughs> and then you're going to bring your tailbone in and tighten your abs, your whole core, um, and bring your arms out parallel to the ground. You're going to bring your gaze over your right arm, and you're going to lift up your right toes and turn them 90 degrees and put them back down. And then you're going to bend your knee. And your knee is going to stack straight over your right knee, uh, your right ankle, sorry. And your arms are going to be in line with your body. Your hips are going to be turning. Your left hip is going to be opening. And your, <laughs> <laughs> your gaze is just going to be over your right arm. And that's where you're Um, And then... The next pose is firefly. It's kind of funky to get into. <laughs> um, so you're going to have a shorter stance, a little bit wider than shoulder width. Um, and you're going to try to get your right, sh your shoulders underneath your knees is the, the final goal there. Um, so you're going to tuck your right arm under your right knee. And then you're going to do the same thing with your left. And walk your feet in a little bit once you've done that. And put your hands on the ground outside your feet. <laughs> and then from here, you're going to put your weight onto your elbows. Um, and just start to feel the weight into your hands and out of your feet. And if you have tight hamstrings, this is going to be tough. Yeah, it's not happening for me. <laughs> From here, just straighten your legs and your arms. <laughs> and then tree posture is pretty easy. Um, we're just going to come to a standing pose. And if you're a little bit wobbly or if you feel a little wobbly today, you can just keep your left, your foot down here on your ankle um, or your calf. Or if you're feeling good today, you can bring it up and rest it on your thigh. The one thing you don't want to do is put it on your knee because you don't want to have any pressure on your knee. Um, so you come up here and bring your hands to prayer and you're in the pose. From here, you can bring your arms out or you can take a lower variation and come into a toe balance. One hand at a time, you can bring your hands to heart center. Or you can bring it into an arm balance. <laughs> um, this is four finger, four finger crow, I believe it's what it's called. Um, where you hook your left, or your right foot on your left arm and you rest your right knee on your right arm. And you just slowly bring the balance into your hands. And this is kind of on your core. I'm not really using my arms at all. I mean, obviously I am, but. That's dope, man. You're a beast. <laughs> and this is the business. <laughs> So I challenge all of you guys to um, try one or all of the poses and um, tag me on Instagram or on Facebook or Tumblr and show me your progress. Yes, that's great. You're going to just try, um, tag, drive, and grind. <laughs> <laughs>